Good morning, everyone. We're going to give you a little bit to tune in here. And today our craft and story are about beavers. We have a special new beaver resident here at the park. And so we have this cool beaver puzzle. And I wanted you all to look around your house and see if you have anything inspired by beavers. Maybe you have a book about beavers or a project you did at school. And so think about the ways that beavers have been something you've learned about and seen throughout your life. And we will be doing a bunch of beaver crafts and stories, I'm sure, because we love our new beaver, Bixby. And we're going to start out today with a book with Mrs. Sandwick and a beaver craft about wetlands. So we have our wetland habitat depicted behind us here at the Nature Center. And we will let Mrs. Sandwick come in and read her story. Then we can meet our beaver and do our beaver wetland craft for today. Good morning, boys and girls. Well, you, now Ranger Angelina said, look around your house and see if you have anything that depicts a beaver. Well, my husband didn't hear that, but he thought it was pretty funny this morning to go in the girls' bedroom, our granddaughters, and they have all kinds of animals in there. And he found a beaver that looks a lot like Bixby. You guys, Bixby is so cute. Oh my gosh, you are gonna just absolutely fall in love with Bixby. So I, I had so much fun yesterday holding him and he cuddles like this, like a little tiny baby. It's just so awesome. So I have several beaver books that we're gonna be getting to in the next few weeks because we hope that Bixby will be a longtime resident here at the Nature Center. Um, so today I'm going to be reading a book that is by author and illustrator Nicholas Olbin. I don't know why, I don't know what his obsession is with beavers, but this man has like three beaver books with the same beaver character. And I think you're gonna enjoy it. I bought all of them, I couldn't help myself. So we're gonna be doing those. So today we're gonna be doing the very busy beaver. And I will tell you after watching Bixby a little bit yesterday in the pond with the turtles, Bixby is a busy beaver himself. There once was a beaver who was so busy that he didn't always think things through. This beaver's carelessness was becoming a real problem. His dams that he built leaked and he always made a mess of the forest. He left trees half chewed and worse, he felled more trees than he needed. Perhaps worst of all, the beaver went about his work with so little thought that a tree landed, oh, look, right on top of the bear. And once he even chewed a moose's leg because he thought it was a tree. This beaver was out of control. This beaver was being careless. Well, it was only a matter of time before something went terribly wrong. Sure enough, one day, the beaver was so busy choo-choo-choo-choo-chewing on a tree that he failed to notice that it was falling in his direction. The beaver woke up in the hospital with a bent tail, two broken limbs, three cracked ribs, four big bruises, five spring fingers, six twisted toes, seven little cuts, eight stinging scratches and nine sore muscles and 10 nasty little slivers. Oh, he had spent his entire life chewing, swimming and building. He had never sat still for a second. Now he could barely even scratch his own nose. And they love scratching their nose. I found that out yesterday with Bixby. He's like, 
At first, all the beaver could do was stare at the ceiling. But little by little, he began to heal. With lots of rest, he regained his strength. And before too long, he was trying out a pair of crutches. Well, eventually, the beaver was able to hobble over to the window. This was the first time that he noticed his leaky dam, the mess of the trees that he had left half chewed, his friends, bandages, and a family of homeless birds with no tree branch. He realized, oh my goodness, he had a lot of work to do. The next day, the beaver embarked on a rigorous rehabilitation program. He got back on his feet. He did lots of yoga. He even lifted weights. While he was at it, the beaver caught up on some important reading. And he practiced saying, I'm sorry, into the mirror. I'm sorry. Soon enough, he was ready to go home. Run, run for your lives, the bear said when he saw the beaver coming. The beaver's friends, you see, were a little worried about his return to the forest. But despite their concerns, the beaver went straight ahead. Hi, guys. Before the beaver started his first project, he did a full tree inspection. He checked to see if there were any animals anywhere in harm's way, and he carried a frightened caterpillar to safety. Then the beaver went ahead and built the family of homeless birds a new nest. Next, the beaver went and apologized to his friends for being careless and causing so much damage. Sorry, guys. Thank you, the bear said. To show that he meant it, he made the bear a vase for his den with a wildflower in it. And he built a canoe for the moose. Apology accepted, said the moose. The beaver's final task was to clean up. Oh, he really had made a mess in the forest. So he hauled off the trees that he had left half chewed, used the broken branches to fix his leaky dam, and planted saplings to replace the trees that he had felled. So with the forest all back in order, Beaver was happier than he'd ever been, and everyone that looked around the forest was happy too. Oh, his work was done. The beaver got to thinking about what he might do next. He came up with lots of ideas as he got ready for bed. He's brushing his teeth. I don't think Bixby did that last night, but I don't know, we should ask. Maybe he would take a course on dam building. Or maybe he'd start a band and go on a tour. Or take more naps. The beaver liked the idea of the naps best of all. Being busy, doing good work. Oh, it was exhausting though. Oh, with a yawn, he laid his head down on a soft bed of leaves and he fell right to sleep. All that was left for the beaver was to do was dream. Happy beaver dreams. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. I know that Ranger Angelina has a great craft for you. Does she have a surprise for you, too? Oh, I think she does. Hers looks a lot more fun than mine. All right. Thanks, Mrs. Sandwick, for your story. And you're right, Bixby did not brush his teeth last night. He doesn't ever really brush his teeth. He does have really special teeth, though. His teeth are orange because they have iron on them so that he can eat things like trees, which are the main part of his diet. He's being so good. He doesn't like mornings. Uh, so we can look at, <coughs> oh, I spoke too soon. We can look at Bixby because we're going to make a craft where we cut a beaver out of some construction paper. So take a good look at this guy with his little ears and he has little beady eyes and a little nose and he has whiskers. Mainly he's just this big 
chunk. <laughs> and he has this big long tail too. And he thinks he's a lot smaller than he is. Kind of like a big dog that thinks he's a lap dog, but really he's not. Bixby's nice and soft. Right, buddy? Okay, can you go back to Sarah so we can do our craft? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so we are going to make a craft about wetlands today. Because as Mrs. Stanwyck said, beavers are like engineers or architects. So maybe your mom or dad or someone in your family is an architect or an engineer. So they are someone who designs and then maybe builds these cool structures. And the most important thing is the planning. So you want to plan to make sure everything fits together and is in a good area. And then you pick out the materials and then it's constructed. So all of those aspects before the actual building are so important. And beavers are really good at all of those things, which make their dams so successful. And people are really fascinated by beavers because they can change our landscape so much. Really, they're only second to humans in how much they construct and change the environment. And back about 10,000 years ago, there were millions and millions of beavers in North America. It's like 60 to 400 million beavers, which is a ton. So it's not like beavers are out of control nowadays. There are fewer beavers than there were then. And I use the word dam. So beavers build dams, which are a structure to change the way that water moves. So it blocks the water or it might make it go a different direction. But then they live in dens or burrows. So they don't live in their dam necessarily. They live somewhere else and they live with their family unit. So it could be a mother and a father beaver and, and they have kits. And so it could be one to four kits every year. That's what a baby beaver is called. It's called a kit. So first of all, we are going to take some of our brown construction paper and draw a beaver. And we're just gonna draw it how we think a beaver looks because maybe part of it is under the water. And so it looks a little different. The water makes things look funny. We're gonna draw a little beaver nose. And then some little beaver ears, like Bixby's. And this beaver is gonna be small enough that it will fit on our plate. So maybe one fourth of the size of our plate. And beavers do have hands, they have front hands, and they have big back feet. Can we see Bixby's big back feet? Do you think he'll show us? So these big feet are used for swimming in the water and they're webbed like a duck. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is that ticklish? Is, does anyone else have ticklish feet? <laughs> Can you see Bixby's feet? Oh, thanks buddy. And so they do have, they have four legs with those big back feet. And then obviously the most crazy part of a beaver and the part you always think of is that big tail. And Bixby's tail is about half the length of the rest of his whole body, that tail. And his tail, what would you say this feels like? <clears throat> oh, it's rough. Maybe like a tire almost? Yeah. It's textured. <laughs> it's hard, but it's not real hard, so it's kind of still flexible. It feels a lot different than I thought a beaver tail would feel like. <laughs> I think it's ticklish for Bixby. <laughs> So this is what my beaver looks like, and I'm gonna cut him out. Beavers are mammals, but they live in the water. They still breathe oxygen. Uh, so can you think of any other mammals that live in the water? There are some mammals that live in wetland habitats like Bixby does. Maybe like an otter or a mink or a muskrat. Those are all things that people easily confuse with beavers. Uh, then there are some mammals that live in the ocean. 
like whales and dolphins and seals. So there are a lot of different mammals that live in water. And beavers, like I said, have to breathe oxygen still, just like all those other mammals. But they can hold their breath underwater for a long time. Also, they have some really cool adaptations, which are ways that their body has changed so that they are well suited for the environment that they live in and their lifestyle. So one of those things are sets of doubles. So they have double eyes, kind of like if you were to wear goggles, and then they have double lips. And that way they can chew on their branches underwater and then they have double ears so that the water doesn't get in their ears since they spend so much time underneath the water that they don't want to have ear infections like maybe you get sometimes when you go swimming in the summertime. So I cut out my beaver, which is the most important part of our craft today. And you might say it's the keystone of our wetland craft. And I use that word because beaver are known as a keystone species. That means a really vital, really important species in an ecosystem. Kind of think of it like a main character in a movie or a book. And it's the main thing that kind of makes everything else change and affects so many different things. And that's one thing I really like about this puzzle that I showed you earlier and our wetland poster that we have here in the nature center because beaver affect so many other animals. So here in this puzzle, this was donated by a family called the Kings that come and see us a lot. And the beaver is the main character here. He's in the front, but all these other species benefit from the beaver. And so we're gonna cut out some water and this can be a circle and fill up your whole plate. You might put your plate down and trace it if you want it to fit perfectly. I'm just gonna kind of cut a shape that maybe looks like Bixby's Pond here. Okay, so I have my water and then I'll put Bixby on here. And then I have some fun shapes. Maybe you have some uh, stickers or stencils or other things at home that you can use on your craft. And I found some cool shapes that are some of my favorite animals. So I said that beavers are a keystone species, which is a pretty fancy word that biologists use. So what beavers do is they come in and they're the engineer or the architect and they dam up areas to create a wetland. And a wetland is exactly like what it sounds. It's a wet area <laughs> of land. So it's shallow. It's not like a new pond or a river or a big body of water like that that's created by the way the land is shaped. Uh, beavers do pick areas where they have a stream or something already, and then they engineer it to sit a little differently. And one third, that means one out of every three animals that is threatened or endangered lives in a wetland. They also say that one half, which means one out of every two animals that is threatened or endangered lives at least part of its life in a wetland. So that's crazy to think of. Wetlands rival rainforests in their amount of biodiversity, which is the overall um, diversity of life in an area. So we think of rainforests, and when you see a poster or a story about rainforests, and you see insects and frogs and birds, and they're colorful, and there's all these different plants, and we think of that as being so rich or so full of biodiversity, well, wetlands are just as crazy, vibrant, and rich, and important. And we have a lot of those here in Oklahoma and across the United States. And beavers are the ones that are making that happen. So some of my favorite animals that I'm going to add to my beaver wetland habitat are what we call invertebrates. So they're animals that don't have a backbone. 
And there are a lot of invertebrates that have to lay their eggs in wet areas. And one of those are my favorite called dragonflies. And we have some really cool dragonflies in Oklahoma. And dragonflies, you'll find like if you're floating the river or maybe you're fishing along a pond and you'll see some dragonflies up on some tall vegetation or maybe they land on you if you're floating the river. And there are also damselflies. So the dragonflies are the really big ones with the big bodies and wings. And the dragonflies are the kind of skinnier one. The damselflies are the skinnier ones. So I'm gonna put these with some glue onto my craft. And then I am going to put a butterfly. So butterflies like skippers, I see it a lot of times on the edge of the Illinois River. And they're just in that muddy area soaking up some good food. And beavers, which uh, Mrs. Sandwick talked about some of her story, beavers are herbivores. So they don't eat the fish in your pond. Um, they're, not, they're not a pest in that way. They eat mainly trees. And they eat fast growing trees like willow, which I have some willow here and aspen, and they'll eat button bushes. And those are trees that grow alongside water, which makes sense, right? Because that's where the beavers live. And they have really juicy cambium, which is what the beavers are going in to eat. And when the beavers chew off their branches, they help those grow in thicker and with more branches than they did the year before. So it's kind of like pruning, if you've ever heard that word. So when you cut back, a tree or maybe it's something like a crepe myrtle in your yard or a rose bush and then it grows healthier the next year which is kind of crazy to think about. Now I'm going to glue a frog. Obviously these frogs live by water and frogs have to lay their tadpoles, their eggs, in water to hatch into tadpoles. So they really need the water that's created by these beavers in these shallow wetland areas. Then I'm going to glue down this flower. There are a lot of species that grow that need a lot of water like the button bush and there are some that don't grow very tall so when there are a bunch of tall trees they can't grow and so they need the beavers to clear out those areas so that they can get some sunlight so that they can grow. And I really like cattails. We have some behind us here. They're the things that kind of look like corn dogs. I always call them corn dogs and you know exactly what I'm talking about because that's exactly what they look like. And so I'm gonna cut out some of the top corn dog part. And they look like this. And then I have some sticks here. You could use some toothpicks or some other things. And I have a foam plate, so I'm just going to stick my cattail or my corn dog right in there. And I think on my Bixby, I think I'm going to draw an eye. And then I'm going to do some marks on his tail to show the texture. It almost look like X's. Make his eyes a little bigger. They have little eyes. <laughs> so there's my Bixby. And like I said, beavers have orange teeth. So if you wanna cut out a little bit of your construction paper that's orange and make them with orange teeth, that would be good and accurate. And then I think I'm gonna add some lily pads to mine. So I'm going to cut them out of green and I'm going to make them kind of in the shape of circles, but they don't have to be perfect because lily pads aren't perfectly circular. Does anyone have any questions about Bixby? His ears perked up. You can ask us some questions. We'd be happy to answer them. So we do have some willow for Bixby to eat, like I talked about. He's still a wild animal, 
so he still eats the things that wild beavers eat. <laughs> it's getting kind of crazy over here. Bixby, you want to come help me finish? Come here. So beavers aren't mean, they're not aggressive, um, but it's not something you should be picking up in the wild. Bixby's used to being around <coughs> humans. You want to see your craft? And that's why he's staying with us here in captivity. So in the wild, you shouldn't be picking up a beaver because you want them to be able to stay out in the wild where they belong. But our Bixby here is a special beaver. You also don't want to take the chance of getting bitten by those hard teeth. Yes. Because they will defend themselves if needed. People always worry about being bit by a snake when they're here in the nature center. Snake teeth are tiny and they're not hard. They're definitely not <laughs> ironized. And so being bit by a be beaver hurts a lot worse than being bit by a snake. And it's not something you should worry about or fear in the wild. But if you are messing with them, they might be provoked to bite. <laughs> so we'll have a baby shower for Bixby next weekend. And you'll continue to see updates on him throughout his life. So continue to work on your wetland craft and you can add all kinds of things. And it will really get your brain thinking about all the different species that rely on wetlands, plants and animals, and all the different animals that have at least one of their life stages in this aquatic system. So even things like bats that will hunt bugs over the water. They need an open area to go and hunt. Uh, things like egrets and storks and those big birds that need that shallow area. They're hunting for fish and crawfish and those kind of animals that need to live in the water. Um, raccoons love fishing in the shallow areas. Woodpeckers, um, ducks. All kinds of animals that we love are living in wetlands created by beavers. And beavers are not as plentiful as they once were, as I said. So be sure to learn a little bit more about these really amazing architects in nature before just tearing down their dams, as often happens, because they are creating vital ecosystems that so many other things rely on. And thanks for tuning in to our craft today and keep following us for more info about our amazing new resident Vicks.